Good evening, good evening, everybody on this beautiful, beautiful Monday evening in this great state of Texas. We are really excited to be here today at Beyond the Noise. Uh, this is just another uh, podcast where we just talk about all the things that we feel are important and we try to get a little bit deeper than the surface cliche uh, statements. I have a uh, young Graceo with me again today. <laughs> now, we have a uh, Hi. <laughs> We've challenged Young Grace over with the task of many things, and we saw that she was so multifaceted and so gifted last week that we decided we were going to put a few more things on to see how much we could pile on and how much she can handle. But what's going on, Young Gracie? Up? <laughs> um, nothing. I have Instagram Live on. All right, we got Instagram Live. Live. Mm-hmm. And um, make sure you ask questions, and I will be sure to be the voice behind your questions. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. So we, now we have a voice behind the questions. I'm just really hoping that that voice is going to speak loud enough for everyone to hear. All right. And as we get along, today's show is brought to you by Dirt Group. Uh, today, most of us are within one degree, one degree of separation from someone fighting cancer, diabetes, obesity, heart disease, high blood pressure, and right now, uh, the coronavirus. Uh, Just a half a teaspoon of dirt, spice, and a cup of coffee, or a cup of tea turns it from an acidic beverage to an alkaline beverage. Now, this is vegan friendly, vegetarian friendly, and it is all people friendly. It's actually uh, omnivore, herbivore, carnivore, anything else you want to call it, spring to all of us. And also, that uh, delicious granola uh, has that wonderful spice as the main ingredient. So, I encourage us all to go and get a bag, well don't go get a bag, let's order a bag and then let's order a bottle of spice. You can find them at eatdirtfood.com, you can find them at uh, Instagram at eatdirtfood.com and Facebook at eat for food. good, I eat dirtfood.com. God I make dirt, <laughs> dirt don't hurt. Let me tell you why I'm uh, running all over my words because I'm super excited about today. You guys have no idea. A lot of people think I'm a football guy. I love football, but football is actually my third favorite sport. Baseball is the love. Boxing is number two. And uh, football is number three. With that being said, our guest today uh, was born and raised in Funky Town, born and raised in Fort Worth, came out of O.D. Wyatt. I know a lot of good athletes that came out of O.D. Wyatt. And I got some good friends that came out of O.D. Wyatt. And from there, he decided to put them hand, put them gloves on, just put them paws on quite a few people. And he fought at cruiserweight, fought at heavyweight. Uh, he was at one time the USBA heavyweight champion. He retired in 2018 only to uh, step out of the ring into a harder fight to try to help these kids get a little bit further in life. This dude is a good friend of mine. I am super excited to have Mr. Kendrick Relaford on the show today. All right. Great, so I've been talking about Kendrick too, uh since what? Sunday afternoon and then all the way up to two minutes before the show. So yeah. we're gonna get right to it. What's up, man? How you doing? Not much good. You doing all right? <laughs> yeah. It's kinda crazy. It's right? different. Sitting here is a little bit different. Yeah. Man, you coming out of Funky Town and you come from a fight family. Mm-hmm. Why why them hands? Why why did you fight? So you just mentioned something. <laughs> <laughs> With some history. Yeah. Your first love. Really? I broke my arm my sophomore year uh, playing football mm-hmm. and messed up all my baseball scholarships. Shut up. So, so I, when did you start boxing? So I was born and raised boxing, mm. but I would fight, then go play baseball. Fight, then go play baseball, football, soccer. Are you serious? Yeah. So baseball was actually my first love. Really? Yeah. But I ended up breaking my arm and... Uh, I knew I could fight, so <laughs> <laughs> that that I, once you know my sophomore year, and it's like, well, I know I'm not the favorite on the football team. Mm-hmm. Um, baseball kind of out the window. We didn't know about surgeries and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um, so I said, well, I know I want to be a professional athlete. So what what part what part of arm you break? My right arm, my throwing arm. But I mean, my elbow. Broke it. So you, oh man, did you pitch? Yeah, not catching. Oh, yeah. so your pop time, everything about yeah. you, yeah, you mm-hmm. can't let the ball fly. Yeah, so it was a man. totally different world, man. Yeah. So everything changed uh, my sophomore year. But you started fighting as an amateur before I, that. So you, I, before you went. So let me get this right, because mm-hmm. I, you I threw a loop in there. You did it all. You, yeah. you was nasty, and then 
you broke your arm and then you turned the boxer because box. you knew you could fight. Exactly. You had already been fighting. Yeah. So you, what was your amateur record looking like? So, at time? actually, I don't. I know for certain I only had eighteen amateur fights. Total. So, total. So, so you jumped in the game, green and young. So, in a way, mm. I, I kind of cheated because my dad, my uncles were no, fighters. So I grew up in the gym. Mm -hmm. So my talent way better than what my experience was. Your skill or your talent? Exactly. Um, so I had my first fight at 10 years old. But I actually got registered to fight at 8. I just went two years of training because yeah. I couldn't get a fight with guys fight. Yeah. at my age because I was more advanced mm -hmm. at my age at 8, 9, and 10 than most beginners. Really? Mm -hmm. So, it, yeah, I kind of had that um, that Floyd Mayweather syndrome, yeah, what you, I call you it. You knew, though, <laughs> but you, 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 you grew up around it, so you knew what yeah. you were getting into. You I knew what I was getting into. Yeah. yeah. So it wasn't one of them uh, because you could fight. It wasn't a, it mm -hmm. wasn't just because you you could fight, we're going to push you towards fighting. Yeah, no, no, no. It was, you, you have an under, your family has an understanding sure. of this skill or this science. For sure. And you, you, you fell into the science. Indeed. So and that's why you and that's why I chose. It. Yeah. So and is that why you coach? Yes. I, let's let's stay where we are. All right, all right, all right. All right. So it. it it is. So baseball, I was able to travel. Mm -hmm. um, all star team, select baseball. Mm -hmm. You know, Junior USA, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. um, coming from Eastwood, stop six mm -hmm. in, in the nineties. You know, gangs and all that was rampant back mm -hmm. then. So I knew in order for me to get out of the hood, sports was my avenue. So my dad would, you know, take me different baseball tournaments or where the team would, would travel. Right. And so I knew um, sports was my outlet. Let me ask you a question before we, like I'm gonna, mm -hmm. before we continue, the sports being your outlet, cause why was that the only outlet? Like for us, my folks big on graduating, making good grades. Indeed. But the sport felt like the outlet. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize at that time it wasn't the only one because I got my grades, all the other stuff. So back to the question, why was it the why was it the ticket? I hated school. That's so fair. <laughs> now let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As simple as that, man. You know. Um, I made good grades, don't mm -hmm. get me wrong, but what are you going back? I, and I knew it. You know, mm -hmm. my junior year, mm -hmm. I asked my dad, hey man, would you get mad if I dropped out of school? He said, nah, you just come work with me. Mm -hmm. Nah, I'm gonna finish school. <laughs> <laughs> because, yeah. you know, outside of boxing, once he was finished boxing, he used to tie the steel and form in the swimming pools. So I knew, you know, you, they dig the holes. Yeah. They bring the rebar in. Yeah. So my dad them did the rebar. So I knew he would work sun down to sun down. He mm -hmm. still got rebar marks on his shoulder from from mm -hmm. from the sun burning. Mm -hmm. So I said, Nah, that's not my thing. Mm. <laughs> I, I want to live the life, you know, be able to travel how I want to, mm -hmm. make the money I want to. Baseball was gone at that time. Mm -hmm. I knew I wasn't gonna do it in football. Shoot, boxing. You yeah, know, I, I was able to see. You know, my dad, my uncles, they make good money and travel. Shoot, I'm gonna do the same thing. Man, that, so you had a real live example that you followed, mm -hmm. consciously and subconsciously, mm -hmm. actually, because yeah, you, you was watching and not knowing it was teaching you. But, you was just liking it. You was loving it. Loving it. And it was drawing. Yes, sir. Man, you just and, um. Going to what you're saying constantly and subconsciously. Mm -hmm. I remember the third grade running with my dad, running three miles. Yeah. Coming up campus drive, ODY. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he had me in training. Mm -hmm. He never made me box. Right. His thing is, you don't even have to box. Play baseball. Yeah. That's your ticket. Play baseball. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. Mm -hmm. Baseball, 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 and then once that went. Mm -hmm. Well, Dad, I know I'm good at boxing. Mm -hmm. Help me be good. Help me be great. And that's what he did. Really? Mm -hmm. So you, 
So some you had to learn a lot about being a professional fighter for sure. as a professional as fighter. A professional. Like you didn't do a lot before then mm-hmm. when you was being groomed to fight. You knew you could fight. Yeah. But then you had to learn about the profession. Man, let me ask you a hard question. Yeah. Is sometimes a profession harder than the fight itself? Yes. The How? profession, the business mm. will have you contemplating retirement, your first year in the game. Why? If you're not groomed or led the right way. Mm-hmm. The reason, you know, that I'm 80s baby. Yeah. You get that, I'll fight anybody, anytime, anywhere. Let's just go. Mm-hmm. That's not the business. Right. You, you get me? So there were plenty of times where it's like uh, bills do. Mm-hmm. Baby, need diapers. Yeah. You know. But ain't no fight coming up. I'm training, but no fights coming. Mm-hmm. Not because the fights aren't coming because of me. Mm-hmm. It's almost as if um, what it is not making business sense on their behalf. And you didn't understand. And that. I didn't understand that. Not until now that I'm older mm-hmm. and I started managing myself, because my dad didn't know the business aspect of it. Man, if I had a dollar for every time I heard <laughs> one of my partners say my dad didn't know the mm-hmm. business aspect, mm-hmm. I have sixty-two dollars for sure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that, and I mean that because I know a lot of dads that do everything they can and that they know for their kids, mm-hmm. but you can't do something you don't know. Yeah. So for us, <laughs> we are the trial and error folks. For sure, like we're really working this thing out mm-hmm. to try to pass it down. So kind of feel the responsibility that we have to figure out how to I have to, have to. Um, he, so let me yeah. rewind. Yeah. Um, so my, David Gorman mm-hmm. was manager of the year, managed Donald Curry, Steve Crew. At this time, at, you know, in the 80s, mm-hmm. five world champions. Mm-hmm. So my dad, all he had to do was fight. Well, once it became time for me, David started me but he ended up dying. Mm. So then my dad mm-hmm. was in cert. He, 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 was, he was the choice. Whether he want to or not. Yeah, that's what he's doing. That's what you're going to do. Mm-hmm. Whether you know the business. Let's learn. It. Let's go. The whole, yeah. Well, he didn't know how to separate the fighter mentality from the business mentality. He took that, bi- that fighter into the business and hence me taking a lot of fights I shouldn't have taken. That's what I was going to say. So mm-hmm. and the truth about Solid fighters versus great fighters. Mm-hmm. We're not even talking about the talent level. Mm-hmm. That's not. It's really understanding how to navigate the, the waters. Yep. Because you probably got fighters out there that start out one in six. Mm-hmm. That it really good fighters. They might be in the wrong weight class. They mm-hmm. might not be managed by the right people. Mm-hmm. They might just need to feed their kids. Indeed. Man, I ain't. I. You know. You hear that? Yeah. But hearing it from you because we know each other. Yeah. That's in. That's sure. insane to think about and I believe every word of it. Yeah. I, I always tell fighters, if we knew the power we possess as fighters, mm-hmm. the whole industry would be different. What's the approach? How, how do you... So, now you're learning. Now I'm learning. So, what, what is the key to it? It's not even in boxing. It's us teaching our kids the economics. The commerce. The commerce. The, the money part. The money part. That's why you're doing Outside of sports. Yes, sir. So you can learn. I got to. Um, it's like this. Most fighters come from broken homes. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the, the, the mud, what we call it. Mm-hmm. You know, poor. So it's the last resort. Boxing is, well, I couldn't make it in baseball. Right. Football, but I know I got these hands. I know I got these hands, mm-hmm. and that's that's the, or I need to stay out of trouble. Mm-hmm. I love fighting. Dang, well I could beat up somebody from. I know I, I got trouble. these hands. Oh, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that that in itself is what almost hurt us mm. because we can't control the business because. The bills do. Mm-hmm. We can't. We can't. As a fighter, I know. Like I said earlier, baby got need diapers, rent mm-hmm. due. I can't say no. I'm not gonna fight for this much. Well, cool. You won't fight for this much. We're gonna find somebody else who will. Wow. So that kind of 
They mess with your value. You, you didn't understand mess. your value. You and it, it took away your liver. It, <laughs> it took away, it your, takes it took away. your ability yes, sir. to negotiate your fight. Yeah. So you could have been a cruiser fighting a heavy mm -hmm. because you needed the payday. And it's going although you probably gave him hell. Yeah, he not really could have. It happened. I was. Oh, wow. Talk to me. What does it look like? <laughs> I was that cruising. What's a cruiser? So, cruiserweight is, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> as a <laughs> professional, my bad, uh, cruiserweight is what, one, just say 180 to 200. It's a, what? Light heavyweight is 175. So, so anything, anything above 175. There you go. To, to 199. Yeah. Uh huh. So, that's the cruiserweight. Wow. So, I was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was a um, small. Cruiserweight. Mm -hmm. I was a small heavyweight, but a big cruiserweight. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't get fights at cruiserweight. I'm six foot three, coming from 215 to 20. Too big. And I'm too big. Yeah. But then on the flip side, if you want to fight, you got this guy coming from 260 to get to 240. Mm -hmm. and it's like, well, shoot. You want to fight him? Well, not, not really, really <laughs> but <laughs> bills do. Wow. I'm in a desperate situation. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But on, on the flip side, that also goes to the importance of having a good amateur background, mm -hmm. a good um, team behind you as far as coach. So like running a business. You, running you a business. General manager. It's, you got to have people that's going to put you in the right position. Because, man, listen, for me, I wanted to box when I was a kid. My mm -hmm. old man wouldn't let me do it. I couldn't understand why. The only reason I wanted to box, man, because this girl named Dawn. This is a true story. Oh, really? This girl named Dawn, <laughs> she was like in the sixth grade. I was in the third grade. I would come oh, home from nice. Southside Elementary. I'm not making this up. I would come home from Southside Elementary. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Dawn, she wanted to fight my sister. But, you know, my sister, she looked, she decided not to go that route. So I'm on my way home, and uh, Dawn know that I'm my sister's brother. Yeah. Man. Don't punch me in the middle of the back so hard. <laughs> Made me slide all down the concrete. So I get up. I try. I did. Mm -hmm. She had too much, man. She was too much. And you know, Don Don kind of like she could throw a baseball with the left hand, a softball with the right hand at the same time. Okay. She 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 gave me the business. So from that moment, I was like, man, I ain't trying to take it up. Like that. Yeah. I don't care who it is. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason I'm gonna try to box. That gotcha. was it. Gotcha. But then baseball. Indeed. Baseball, football, then I worry about it. But I'm listening to you. That's crazy. It's, uh, man, it's, it's, it's just a trip how life has played itself out. Mm -hmm. the, my Uncle George always told me, uh, life is boxing. Mm -hmm. Be prepared to take punches. Be prepared to move, slip, and, and adapt and move on. Mm -hmm. That's life. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So that, that and it's the business of it. Mm -hmm. like, wow. Yeah. So you, you as a fighter, you've seen quite a bit, been a yeah. lot of places, but you didn't really start learning the commerce mm -hmm. until towards the end of your Toward career. the end of it, yeah. So when the lesson was necessary, mm -hmm. you were just, you were just catching the, the loss. I'm a late bloom. Mm -hmm. now, or you bloom like the rest of us. Yeah, you, okay. You know, like for me, you always are drawn toward the thing you love and you want to learn the most about. Mm -hmm. Like this is the coaching that is well beyond, you know, the hour or whatnot. Man. I actually love, like, I yeah. love what I do. So you you put yourself in the middle of it so you can know I'm not, I'm doing that right. Yeah. Why I'm not going to do it that way. For sure. But again, I didn't learn about business. I've been mm -hmm. owning this for six years. I didn't start learning actually how this stuff works mm -hmm. like two years ago. At this point, yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of lessons that cost a lot of things. And so they, I'm saying that you own a business now. To talk about let's yeah. talk about dream performance gotcha. before we, you know, go into Dive that part in. of it. Gotcha. Like where are you? What you like? What you doing? What are you specialize? Let's talk about dream performance. So uh, dream performance uh, established in uh, 2018. I'm so excited. Myself. That's yeah. the story we got for that. Myself. <laughs> um, my business partner Corey Broadnecks. Shout out to Corey. You know, um, man, we we come together, same interests, like mind, um, believers, mm -hmm. and want to. We've been through the struggle, mm -hmm. and 
it's a way for us to give back to the next generation. Yeah, you yeah. know, y'all got a physical location. We do have a physical location, um, 6707 Meadowbrook Drive, mm -hmm. right here on the east side of Fort Worth. And, and mm -hmm. you guys specialize in boxing training, boxing, boxing yeah. style training, but you mm -hmm. still do boot camp. Boot camp. Yeah. Like, what, what's it look like? So, here, what we do, um, I have a boxing side where we, you know, some people don't want to compete, so mm -hmm. they, they can still come in and train. They get in shape. They still get in shape. Do um, you teach them how to box? We or do. do. Are you just in there hitting the no. bag and sweating, so, it, taking a little squeeze thing on your face? Nah. Because I was going to say, I know you. <laughs> I know the answer. Yeah. I like, I, listen, this he teaches those yes. parents, kids, everybody in between how to box, mm -hmm. how to throw punches, how to slip. I've yeah. seen it with my own eyes. So my thing <clears> is, um, you get a lot of people that just say title boxing. Mm -hmm. You know, they come in just want for the cardio. Mm -hmm. Well, if they're gonna train a dream performance, I want them to look like they train their dream performance. Makes sense. You mm -hmm. know, I don't want you just in there throwing any kind of way mm -hmm. because. My name on the line at the end of the day. So if they say, oh, I trained a dream performance, and you throwing some wild, crazy hooks, mm -hmm. I'm like, man, who taught you that? Mm -hmm. No, not messing with me, you're not. Yeah. You know, so you are, I have that um, belief that uh, the people we train are our walking billboards. You said you're a believer. Mm -hmm. You know I know that. The good book says a good name. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? That's all I have. That's <laughs> That's what so it is. big on it. You yes, just said that my name is on that. Yeah. Like I, when you when you walk out of there and you, I need to know. You yeah. Know my name is on that. Yes, sir. When I see one of our kids at like when they had like mm -hmm. combines and you know yeah, for sure, I would just sit in the uh, well. I tried to hide so my embrace. Like I was just standing in the back. I wouldn't tell them I was coming. But it's something special to see your kid out there. That looks like the they, yeah, you, they're like man, you look like you know what you're doing. You look like you yeah. know you belong. You are walking with confidence because all your moves are like perfect. For sure, it's so different. Yes, sir. Because they know you knew you could fight. Indeed, you knew how to fight. Yeah. I, I know. Cried the first Teddy, time I watched my girl. Hmm? I cried the first time I watched my girl. Really? I came I, back and I talked to Greg. Well, that was basketball, wasn't it? Yep. Talk about it. <laughs> it's that's the. I think that's the common thing. Why cry? Huh? Why did, Why you, did cry? you cry? I was so excited for them. It was so exciting to see it. She's talking about kids. Like, She's trained. Yeah, yeah for sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, that's crazy. Um, they um, because neither of them are basketball players. Like, well, they are, but they—that's not their baby. Like, mm -hmm. theirs is—it's soccer. Mm -hmm. And because they just went out there and they just did their thing, and you could, you could see the difference in how. They didn't look like they were all over mm -hmm. the place, even though that wasn't their forte. That's not their number one. They were able to be good at it. They, they, looked, yeah, they yeah. looked athletic. They looked good, and it was exciting. And as a basketball player, that's what you you put, that's, that's what I feel. I you know, into them. Weird. Yep, I, I say it all the time. You what you do, you do it. Mm -hmm. It's a it's about them. Mm -hmm. You do it for you because of that feeling. Because you got you have to give it away. Yeah. But, it's not about you. It yeah. can't be about uh -huh. you. Because them long car rides, losing money, and get, that's not, that can't be about Because if it was, you wouldn't go. Would There's no way you would do it. Yeah. You don't open a business like yours mm -hmm. about you. Yeah. It's not, it's not Ken's Relifer's uh, dream mm -hmm. form. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, yeah. But it could, I'm going I'm to talk about something that you may or may not know mm -hmm. uh, before you guys started Dream Perform. Okay. Uh, Cor Corey's wife, uh, was at PE. She Orlean. came in. Yeah, Orlean mm -hmm. came in with Coach Hicks. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Coach Hicks, man. That's one of the incredible track incredible human beings. Yeah. Greatest track coaches that shout out to Coach Hicks. But uh Orlean told Corey about us. Mm -hmm. So Corey came to see me. And me and Corey rapped, you know, and he was like, man, I want to open up this and he was talking about you. I want to open up this, this and this. And I said, well, hey, man, ain't no thing. You come on in, you work for me. You know, I'll show you a few things a week. And he said, you know what? I hear you. I don't want to work for you. I don't want to work for nobody. So mm -hmm. I want you to show me. I, I was like, you know what? I think we can do that. Yeah. Ask him about yeah, it. And then yeah. next thing you know, we had quite a few conversations. And I turned around, and you boys went out there and went crazy. And we're going. Hey, man. And without knowing, mm -hmm. Cause I did the same thing without knowing a third of what we sure. should even have yeah. an idea of knowing. 
Yeah. So why do we do it? Why did you do that? Because um, that sounds absurd. We sound ridiculous. It's right a now. special type of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> special type of crazy. Um, man, the why is always, I just want to see people do good. I just want to be able to help people do better and be better than what I was. Wow. You know, um, just rewinding, like I say, I knew at an early age that I know for sh for certain, without a doubt, that I can teach. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. There's a you know slight difference between the coaches and teachers. You know, the, the coaches, you know, they're gonna tell you how to do this, when to do it. Mm. The teacher gonna tell you why you doing it, mm. why you shouldn't do it. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, because teaching requires um, un understanding and and, it's a con and context. Indeed. You know, and then to me, concept. I think there you go. That, and I'm I'm a teacher by trade. I got my degree okay. in, in education, so I had to understand. Mm -hmm. I couldn't just say do it because I was always concerned about questions. Gotcha. I always ask questions. But like I said, a good teacher answers a whole bunch of questions before you before you got it. Yes, sir. Or a terrible teacher. That's one of the other student at a game. Mm -hmm. Student at a game. Mm -hmm. um, how much of it was actually taught, and how much of it was just learned? Mm. Like how much of somebody had to go, this is this, and this is why we're doing this, or you, so, you learned it through seeing, doing, and experience of catching what don't work for you. Man, I'm gonna tell you. Probably 80% of it was to learn. Mm. <laughs> Learning sucks, man. Hey. <laughs> because, Learning is hard, you bro. know, what we said earlier, our parents didn't know. Right. You know, I don't have entrepreneurs in my, in my family. Well, my grandmother did the daycare, you know. Yeah. But the old school, they don't tell you. They're not going to break it down. Step by step, right, right? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. she, so I plus it's daycare. I, I, that's not my area of right. expertise yeah. anyway. Yeah. You know, so I didn't have anybody to say, "Hey, do this, do this, come up with this." Mm -hmm. I didn't have. It. And, and it wasn't that they didn't want to. It was just they that just don't know. You don't know. And then yeah. if you don't explore it, how you gonna learn? How you gonna know? How you, there's no we, way to learn it. So. We go through the same, and this is another reason why I started coaching. We go through and live most times within the same three to five square miles. A lot of people have never left out of Fort Worth. Hmm. A lot of people don't know what South Lake look like. A lot of people don't know what the north side of Fort Worth look like. So it's a different world every it's time a different world. travel. And, so and you, oh, wow. it's my job and obligation to give that back to the youth. Why do you feel obligated? Because I know, I've been there before. I can't sit on it. And so no one makes it's, you responsible. I, at least that's what I think. You get what I'm saying? I know exactly what you're saying. Um, I, one example I have, a little kid. Uh, well, he's not a kid no more, man. He's 19 now. Mm -hmm. Sammy Brown. But I started training him in the eighth grade. You know what I'm saying? I teach at Westville. Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> him, world, with, with him, never being off Middle Brook, you know, I took him to his first national tournament, and we on the road, and him, I, I, I in all honesty, I thought he was African, <laughs> because how he run, that mm -hmm. stereotype, mm -hmm. he run, man, yeah, I'm from Africa, I'm not, boy, you know, so I ended up calling his granny, granny, where has Sam traveled to? Sam ain't been off another bro. <laughs> oh, shoot, okay. So, in reality, I'm taking him on his first road trip. Mm -hmm. Even teaching him what the self checkout is at Walmart, mm -hmm. that go back to that what I was just saying about we stay in mm -hmm. and we don't explore out of that three to five mile five mile yes. radius. So your world is no bigger than your block. It's no bigger than your block. And ba baseball did that for me. For ba baseball it does that. exactly what you're saying. So yeah. man, daddy, I'm telling you now, man, if you're listening. Man, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it because sure. baseball took me all over Mississippi. All over, yeah. Took me to Florida. Took me to Illinois. See. Baseball did. Yeah. 
football took me all across the United right. States yeah. as, a, as a player, as a mm -hmm. coach, uh, mm -hmm. as a sports performance instructor. Period. It's taking all of like. So you're right. There's a deep obligation you feel when you yeah. get a kid in there, and they, they say, "You know, I want to go to college and do this." Yeah. Or I want to. You're like, now I want to, because I, yeah, I sure. know what you're saying, and I know what that role looks like. And now we I'm have an there. advantage, yes, sir. Because now we we're learning the, the other hard, yeah, part, the commerce part of it, the the the, the part that the, you just that 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 creates generational uh, opportunities. Exactly. Like we have what our parents didn't have. We got the knowledge, so we got to give it away. We got the understanding. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So, like I say, my thing when when I do get that kid, hey man, I want to go to college. Mm -hmm. But what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. Football. A million dudes playing football. What else can you do? Let me ask you a I'm question, because I see where you're going. With I'm listening. So to understand it, we got to ask questions. You got to ask questions. I don't mind asking questions. I don't mind asking the hard questions. Every entrepreneur I've ever talked to, that's the one common three. Mm -hmm. They're going to raise their yeah. hand and ask questions. I, I need to know about this. I don't, I don't mind. mind. How does this work? What's that yeah. look like? And then get mad when you ain't got the answer when you should. Because now I need that yeah. answer. And now, now I just got to take it to give me. Yeah. I just got to yeah, give me whatever it. answers they yeah. give me. I got to go with that. I tell all my fighters, even the newbies, even the people that don't want to fight, hmm. I'm a nosy dude. I'm nosy mm -hmm. because for one, I need safety. I need to know who coming in my gym, the, where you come from, what baggage you bringing with you, because I got to protect everybody that's that coming in here. And nobody's ever broken it down for really? me like that. Yeah. yeah, that's my thinking. That's what I mean by order and structure. Mm -hmm. like, you got a list of questions. I got to like, yeah. how is this gonna work? Yeah, who, who, who is this walking who, in? I need to know. You know why yes, is that car pulling up right there? And my fighters will tell you, uh, hey man, where he come from? And then I go to him. Mm -hmm. I think it's a um, a bully mentality. <laughs> what are you doing here, brother? <laughs> uh, how, what are you? How are you gonna help them in here? I ask them, you mm -hmm. know. But it, it goes back to that security. Mm -hmm. If something that you're doing at home flares up in that ring, I need to know how to combat it. Mm -hmm. So you're just asking questions, not to be nosy, but for the protection of the entity. Enti I have to. So, and the entity is all of it. all of The it. entire situation. Yeah. Especially me. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. I need to know if, worst case scenario, hey, daddy is beating on mama. Mm -hmm. Now you got a uncontrollable anger mm -hmm. in this ring because you flashing back. I was like, well, hold on, man. Let me teach you how to. Tame. Uh, tame. Or, 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 or directed. Direct yeah, let's direct you see what it. I'm saying? Don't, don't call it a dog. Yeah. yeah. Nah, direct uh, listen, don't kill it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to teach you how to control Cut this it. thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we need that. Mm -hmm. As bad as it sounds, no. we need that in, in this ring. We gladiators. Mm -hmm. Since the beginning of the time. You get what I'm saying? I We're a special type of crazy. I say all the time, man. Tell me what you think about this. We don't. This thing about life, man, we don't really know. Mm. Like we, like you and I could rock Figured it out for thirty years together, and you could tell me all about how you fight and you help people not get jumped like you bully people. Mm -hmm. But I will never know that until I get the opportunity to see, to see you fight. Indeed, you know what I'm saying. And it's different. It's so crazy. Mm -hmm. So even with that, like you can talk all the business sense you want, but nobody will ever get the opportunity to see you unless you open a business. For sure. So I guess you have to do, like you said mm -hmm. earlier, like you, you feel obligated mm -hmm. to do. So with that, with Dream Performance, with Corey, and all the things you guys do, taking amateurs, trying to take a pro, working with pro fighters, working with parents. It Collegiate sounds like football players, it all. everything. Yeah. Yes, sir. So not to cut you off, no, go ahead. we youth program, mm -hmm. mentoring, you know. Mentoring who and what? The male and female. Okay. Um, ages, what's the... Our, our program started at age of six. Okay. Six and up. Mm -hmm. um, something I've learned, most mentoring programs cut you off at 18. We go to 25. Mm. Why? I have fighters that are still 28 mm -hmm. that don't have that father figure. Still don't know how to navigate life. Mm. So why would I 
cut them off at 18 knowing they still need the help right. at 25. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I know exactly what you're saying. It, me, as a professional athlete, I turned professional at 19. Okay. It's a professional athlete. So it stopped it, being about the talent and started being about the, the commerce. The commerce. So that profession, let's, I want to be clear. Yeah. Talent matters the For entire sure. time. Yeah. But it's not about the talent as a profession. Mm -mm. It's about the, the commerce, the skills, the commerce, yeah. the understanding, the marketability. Yeah. That, Go ahead. With that, yeah. the marketability. Mm -hmm. Because the most talented guys are not the champions. The hardest workers are always not the are not always the champions. Is that just in boxing and, and, and I, I really I really think from my studies or talking to other people, I think that's just like period. Mm -hmm. Even in the NFL. You know, I, I never been there, but I've heard enough to know it's a lot of politics, man. Or I don't put butts in the seats or I don't create enough um draw. Draw. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because I've played, you know, I play a lot of flag football with some talented guys. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, dude, I just don't see how you're not in the NFL. And they be like, I was. <laughs> I, yeah. I was. Yeah. You know, yeah, like, I know. I played with a So teams. my thing is, well, you was. Why do you think you're not? Mm. Well, they brought in so and so. My numbers was way better than his, but he had the name. Oh, God, oh. But you asked the right question. Mm -hmm. You didn't say, well, why ain't you? It's, why do you think? Yeah. Why do you think you're not in the league right now? Yeah. I got cut. I'll tell you why I'm not. Because everybody in front of me was just better. Gotcha. Period. Gotcha. Like, it ain't no knee injury. It ain't yeah, no yeah, politics. Yeah. They were better than me. Now, gotcha. I thought I was good enough to make another team. For sure. I know why I wasn't on that team, though. And Indeed. That's the truth. Gotcha. So. It's, it's um, another reason I do that though, because I want to know if they're going to be truthful with me hmm. or if they're going to blame it on somebody else. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, even basketball. Mm -hmm. I've spoken, well, man, what's well, 12? It's 12 guys. Why do you think you didn't make that, that roster? Or even, you know, collegiate, collegiately, mm -hmm. why do you think you didn't make that team? Because even though I didn't play those sports, mm -hmm. those questions I'm asking allows me to help the youth that are coming. Understanding up. about exactly. what they're getting into. Yes, sir. Man, so let me ask, because I'm so glad you said something about that because one thing that kind of gets to me is when we throw percentages at kids mm -hmm. and we make those percentages uh, negative without context. Mm -hmm. So it's like that whole only well, I don't know, 1% of yeah. players get a chance to play D1. Mm -hmm. That might be right. Mm -hmm. But there are some factors that I personally know no. about that make that 1% a little higher than that according to what you're trying to get into. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So how does that work in the, in the sports arena? I mean, in, in, sorry, in a boxing, boxing arena where, you know, it's, you know it's only, it can only be one champion For sure. in whatever division. Mm -hmm. But like you said, all champions ain't that marketable. Mm -hmm. All of them don't get those paydays. How, how does that? How does that business work? With? So, how can you be in that small percentage? I, I try to um, break it down like this: You have your champions, your contenders, mm -hmm. your pretenders, and your professional losers. Mm -hmm. Wow! And I implant that early into my fighters. Which route do you want to take? There's a place for everybody. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. If, if you could be that professional loser, meaning we just going to call this guy, and they know they just calling him, mm -hmm. he willing to make this money, take it, and he going about his business. Mm -hmm. You can be that guy. And if you're good a journey. at it, a journey, well, not even a journey. Not even a journey. Now, I was considered a journey. So that means you had some ups. And, and some downs. downs. I got you see what I'm saying? Professional loser, professional loser. Yeah, that, that's that it. Category. That, got it. That, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The funny thing about that, though, you can be a professional loser and still make $25,000, $30,000 a year more than your average person. You wow. see what I'm saying? So there's if a. If you take the profession. If you take the profession serious. Because it's still an art, even today. You can't lose too much. 
because nobody will, like nobody will fight you because you nobody fight you. They're not marketable now. But then you can't win. The you can't beat. Ch- uh, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> Man, so it's, so it's a game, it's a business. It's, it's, it is a Ooh. business, but it, it go back to your question. What percentages? Where do these mm-hmm. people fall in there? I always tell people, it takes you as far as you want to go. Boxing take you wherever you want to go. What you said, football, or uh, what baseball took you yeah, yeah. all across Mississippi. Yeah. Football took you across the U.S. Yeah. With me... Those sports did the same thing, but boxing took me around the world. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So that's why I I feel going back to that obligation. Mm -hmm. If you want to travel the world, I can teach you that. Either through the service or through boxing. But you can teach them that. I can teach you that. You see what I'm saying? Because I did it. Wow. I'm listening. I was gonna say, <laughs> I'm gonna go back to what you said. Okay. Now you got it's, you got levels all over. It's the levels. At PE, mm-hmm. I tell people that this this fitness game, the fitness industry, is broken down into pieces mm-hmm. or levels. You got trainers. Trainers are trainers, and trainers are good. I know some amazing trainers, mm-hmm. but that's what they are. You get paid to train, and that's what it is. Okay. Then you have fitness professionals. professionals. And a professional yeah. loser yeah. is still a professional. Still a professional. Yeah. A professional a NFL player is a professional. Mm-hmm. You have fitness pros, fitness professionals. They're, they're not the same as a trainer. Mm-hmm. Okay? They have because they have to do more. There's a little bit more outside Indeed. of the actual hour. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. A loser, okay, go, go. you know what I'm saying? His hour is his profession. That's the truth. That's the truth. So go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, when we came to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And you say, uh, well, are you sure you want to be an owner? Are you, you want to be the manager? Yeah. You just want to be a trainer. There's a different responsibility for every part. Yeah. Should you can still make 60 a year being a manager. Mm-hmm. Still good. Yeah. Should, you can't go wrong with that. Or do you want to take it to another level and be the owner? Now, just keep in mind, you're going to lose some sleep. I remember I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, remember so, you're going to lose yeah, some sleep now. <laughs> yeah. So, but it, 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 I took that mm. and put it to me. Really? Said, well, shoot, you always wanted to own. Not because you want to own, but because I don't want to work for nobody else the rest of my life. You know what I want to own? This is this is the truth. Mm-hmm. I want to own because, to me, I want to be able to pass something mm-hmm. down. Not not the business. The yeah, for sure. But I want to be able to look at my nieces and my nephews and, and go, this is how you get that thing you talk Indeed. about. Indeed. Not fitness, not yeah. you know training, not um, but here are the steps I took because mm-hmm. it. I'm gonna give a shout out to Eric Little. Eric Little is a friend of mine. Eric Little uh, owns a construction company. Um, Eric is brass, smart mouth, real quick. Yeah, he gonna get on me by saying it. But he's one of the kindest human beings, and I mean this, that I've ever met. Like, and I ain't just talking about getting people stuff because it For looks sure. cool. He's just kind. He'll open his door, and Eric, I, I would go to Eric because I knew he owned a business. He owned the company. And I was like, Eric, you know, I, I know I'm gonna take a lot of time and ask you a lot of questions. And Eric said, well, I might not have a lot of answers, but I tell you what, you give me some time, I'll give you some answers. <laughs> and he meant that. Yeah. So I would go in there and he would literally take his time, take time out of his day and sit with me and say, Well, this is what I went through. This gotcha. is the way I did it. So shout out to him for not telling me how to do it, just showing me how he did it. Indeed. And that and that's what you mean by teaching. Like, hey, I can teach you how to yeah. do that. Like, I can't teach you how to be a great. I can I can teach you how to be a great trainer. Mm-hmm. I can't teach you how to own a twenty million dollar company. But I can teach you a whole what bunch of things not to do to open your yeah, company. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's you, super important. What you're saying. You have Eric, and I got <laughs> Trey. Yeah. yeah. Trey Tillman. Yeah. yeah. Construction. It's funny that they both in construction. Yeah. But he was the guy that. 
my blood brother. Mm -hmm. He's the my son's godfather. Mm -hmm. So UFC legend. Mm -hmm. So I got to give you a background yeah, on yeah, trade. Yeah. You know, he was the one of the original lions then. Ken Shamrock. Ken Shamrock. The, the yeah, original yeah, like, like UFC. One, two, and three. Exactly. Like when cats had boots and exactly. shorts. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Where there was wow. no whole boy. So that's where Trey come from. Mm. But through these years, he has been that person for me. Mm -hmm. I'm not asking him for money. But he's willing to give as much knowledge on how to do this, what to do. Mm. Kendrick, this is what I messed up at. This right. is where I... You know what I'm saying? So I have to give that shout out to Trey. Yeah. Man. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and he would always tell me, you know, learn something out of this story I'm finna tell you. <laughs> yeah, take something <laughs> from Take this. something from take this. Take something from yeah. this. Yeah. Because the bumps and bruises that I took, mm -hmm. you don't have to take. Mm -hmm. As long as you take something from this story. Got it. You see what I'm saying? So that's my thing with my fighters. Mm -hmm. I wasn't world champion. I was close, but I wasn't quite world champion. Mm -hmm. But through my goings mm -hmm. and comings and route taking, mm -hmm. man, I could tell you, don't do this, mm -hmm. don't do that, work this way, yeah. don't talk to that person. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can, you can, you I've been can, there. You can be, um, Prophetic, exactly. A prophet, exactly. And not a false prophet. It, like no, you ain't running them down the road that you don't understand. Mm -hmm. This Jasmine, is real. You, you can literally. Huh? Jasmine said, "What's your topic for today?" Uh, what is it? Jasmine? Life. Yeah, life. <laughs> life. Business through sports. Business through sports. Business oh, that's a good sports. one. And that's then, a good one. And then Rev wants to know who he is. That you know, what did they get on, man? They didn't get, get on early. <laughs> You're talking to Kendrick Rella for Kendrick Rella for the. Uh, Former cruiserweight, former heavyweight champ, uh, like you said, with a, was it USBA? Mm -hmm. Yep, champ up, uh, and then uh, you only fought that cruiser. You fought that light though, didn't you? No, 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 no. Just, just, cruiser just and, cruiserweight uh, and, heavyweight. and heavyweight. Yeah, yeah. So former cruiserweight, former heavyweight. Here's a good story. So <laughs> you remember I was I was boxing with mm -hmm. with Law and his team, and I can't I I, I boxed that that uh, we sparred that, that day we went over. Uh, I think it was four of us. It was like. Five of y'all, mm -hmm. and he said uh, everybody was doing uh, two, three round sets. Mm -hmm. I've been like yesterday, so I got in there with a the cat. He had nice hands, and we started turning it up. Like everybody yeah. could tell, like we was turning it up. wasn't necessarily trying to hurt each other, but we started popping, snapping. It got it got a lot of fun. Now I'm talking about in a backyard. Yeah, and stop me when I start lying. With a with a tent like a like a circus tent, yeah. And then like the uh, ring was like a blood sport, <laughs> like the ramp and for the championship yeah. fight. So right in the middle had that mm -hmm. deal. So we was uh and it was it was good. And the other dude didn't want to spar because he felt like everybody was out of his weight class. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, uh, I think your dad your dad was like, well, you know, can you go a couple? Oh, wait, wait. Yeah, can you go a couple of rounds and then. I said, well, shoot, coach, I'm, I think I can go with him because he looked at me. Hey, Law was like, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, not today, son, not today. <laughs> I was like, man, I don't want to see what I, what hey, I man, do back there in the back. That, uh, Law, man, listen, you don't get too many coaches that, do it. He's that, that, man, that, that literally believed in the science yeah. and took care of everything. But on that taking care of note, that's going to protect you from yourself. From yourself. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. A lot of coaches would have, you want to get in there, hop your butt all in there. Yeah, learn that hard yeah. lesson. My dad was that guy. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I learned, though, the good and bad of that. Right. You see what I'm saying? Um, but I know how that could tr crush guys' confidence. Really? This is one thing I always tell guys. You know, I, through the years, you get them off the street, mm -hmm. guys come out of prison, the, the, Hardest dudes. Man, yeah. I do this, I do that, I do this. Yeah. Man, listen. I got a guy that's 118 pounds that'll kick your butt. Mm hmm I've seen it. And you six foot four, three hundred pounds. Six body blows. You see what I'm saying? I've seen it. Yep. One thing in life and in boxing, it'll take the hardest man and make him the weakest. Mm -hmm. That square circle will do that. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So 
there, going back to Coach Moss, there's a science to grooming guys, hmm. whether they want to fight or not, to mentor them how to be a man, but not overbearing. Have you ever you ever read the book The Science of Getting Rich? No. Okay, Wallace D. Waters wrote a book called right, that Science. Down. Hey, we yes. he wrote a book called The Science of Getting Rich, right? Everybody thinks that book is about money. It, it is about money, but it's way deeper than that. Mm -hmm. But he he said exactly what you just said. You have to do things, he, he would say, in the certain way. In a certain way. No, in the, the certain, certain way. Gotcha. So if you want to ensure success, you have to do things. If you want to definitely be rich, you have to do things in the certain way. And you've been saying that this whole podcast. It ain't the most talented. Mm -hmm. It ain't the most this. It's the ones who understand how to yeah. navigate the world, understand the science, mm -hmm. understand the profession. Indeed. And all that I get it. Get to understand it. So yes, how do you feel about your dad saying to be effective as a teacher, you have to be a good student? Absolutely. Uh, do well as a student, I'm sorry. I don't I don't do well in performance or do well in um, structure or education. Because I think practicality and, and experience, be it visual experience, mm -hmm. be it physical experience, is a better teacher than the result of the way the test is. That's just my opinion. Like everybody don't test the same way. But it, some people don't. might understand what's happening. Um, you know? uh, I think in order to be an effective teacher, you have to understand concepts. Period. And be able to articulate. Yeah, yeah, and be able to get people to understand, understand. what you're conveying. Yes, sir. So you you may not have to be a, a good student. Mm -hmm. You have to be a good understander, a good understand concepts. It's you got to be a good learner. Okay. It's like this, uh -huh. even even with with boxing. A, there are a lot of good coaches mm -hmm. that never fought before. Mm -hmm. The thing that set us apart. I can tell you from experience, in that fourth round, mm -hmm. a minute and a half left, your arms should be feeling this way. That's the difference. Right. In what you just said, that learning. Mm -hmm. The way I learn and the way you learn is two different ways. Right. We both learn. Mm -hmm. But what I'm going to be able to tell you from experience it's gonna make the world a difference. And we have to be able to, I have to be able to connect with your tell. I have me. to. Like our experience, I ask a lot of kids when we teach them how to run, what's your favorite what up? Mm -hmm. Because the more stuff I know about it, what's your favorite car? Oh, I know about cars. Indeed. So I understand this movement, I'm gonna make this movement make sense to him in, in the car. In the car. Basically. Basically. I do it all the time, you know, and because to me, mm -hmm. I just got to speak his language. Mm -hmm. I got to figure out what that what that is for him. Indeed, as a business owner. Okay. What what's the hardest? And I want you to really think about the hardest thing that you have to learn. The hardest thing that you've been dealing with. I know it ain't the coaching. The coaching is the easiest thing we it's do. It's the easiest. I don't even have to think. Mm -hmm. I know how to stay relevant. Mm. That's being the hardest thing because you have so many. You got twenty gyms. Mm -hmm. doing the exact same thing. What's going to help you stay relevant with all that mess? You got to find that certain way. You got to find, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, one thing that, that with us is how do we keep evolving? Mm -hmm. That was, that's, that was the proper, what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. I, we, we can't get lost in the sauce. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? I what, know what's, I know exactly what you mean, mm -hmm. but what can we get lost in? What is the sauce? Are, are you saying like getting caught up in the shuffle and trying to be for like sure, everybody? trying to be like everybody or else, trying to uh, surpass people without yeah. understanding the back without end understanding the back end? Okay, so th thank you. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, that was good. Um, what's gonna set us apart? This has always been my belief. There could be another gym right next door to us, mm -hmm. and we're still gonna be successful. Absolutely. Because the relationships we build mm -hmm. and the family atmosphere we create, mm -hmm. the trust we build, trust that's what's going to separate us from that person next door. So not your price. Not the price. Because something else I've learned, I used to, you know, growing into it like, nah, I bet I got to be the cheapest, got to be the cheapest. 
Well, shoot, you learned something from me when I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> shoot, you know, now we talked about that for six yeah, hours. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But so, it was a lot of people say, "Dude, you're heavyweight champion. You you underselling yourself. Do you know how many or how much people would pay to train with you? Like, how many people you know know a heavyweight champion for one? How many people you know can train with one? So don't." You need to know your worth. Know your value. <laughs> you gotta know what you worth. You see what I'm you saying? Be able to put a dollar yeah, on. You gotta be able to put a dollar. I say that all the time, to people. Like you can't put a dollar on certain things. Let me tell you what. I can tell you the whole personal training market for from sure. a, a level one mm-hmm. rookie just getting his whipping card to a, mm-hmm. a 16 year veteran recognizes master trainer and what those prices look like, what those yeah. hours look like, and then everything that goes with that. So. When people charge twenty five dollars mm-hmm. in their garage, it messes with the game. Yeah. Cause you're not paying for the space; you're paying for the value you're paying of the information and understanding. Yeah. And that's what gets you results. That go from uh, now. I gotta go back to mm-hmm. dog breeding. <laughs> Why you gotta watch it? I all think I know. I don't want. No, I, don't I used want to breed. Peter Collins. No, you good. You good. <laughs> I used to yeah. breed for showing mm-hmm. and weight pulling. Yeah. So I had paper dogs, mm-hmm. registered AKC, UKC. Then you got another dude on the corner selling the same dogs, so you think, for way cheaper. Mm-hmm. I said, hey, man, don't do that. You you undervaluing the work I put in and the product and the lineage mm-hmm. of what's, what I'm bringing forth. Same thing you just said mm-hmm. with this fitness. You know what I'm saying? Twenty dollars in the garage? Mm-hmm. That's cool. I started in the garage, but look at my results. I look where I saw. I started. <laughs> that's why we, we started in, in the backyard. Yeah, in the parking lot. In the parking yeah. lot. Yeah. You used to train yeah. for uh, camp 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 camp. Yeah. I was out there at boot camp. Yeah. We literally crossed paths. Yeah. I was like relevant. Yeah. So you know what yeah. we're talking about. It's it's a uh, um it's. I'm teaching you something of value that I'm teaching you how to fish. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Most people just want to eat that. And that's okay. Yeah. Because cool. if you know how to fish, yeah. I I'm learned too. that you can't feed everybody, Mm-mm. but you got to feed you gotta somebody. Be able to provide. You know, but at the same time, <laughs> yeah. if I know how to fish, mm-hmm. I'm going to teach you how to fish. We can start feeding everybody. Then teach for sure. Fish. Now we can make people pay for fish. The, the village. But we can now there you have go. these transactions. Indeed. And I think that's important. Any any other questions? Grace, so everybody, hey man, I'm telling you, they, they, they like going. to cut me short, man. And I know it. No. What's, the time? What's my time? We're going to take a few more minutes. Uh, <laughs> any other questions you got online, Grace? Um, not really questions. They okay. have some comments. Like? Um, Janice Marie said earlier in the conversation that this is true great point when you're talking about uh, understanding yeah. and then Kiki Taylor said understanding <laughs> My is, dude. is the key to life yeah. and then Janice Marie came in one more time and you have to be willing to do what you're asking your students to do as well. Yes you have to yes she and absolutely you, right about that. Let yeah. me let me say something. And then Grace like I want you to say something about it. Yeah. That. Well two more. Carrie okay. said she liked her shirt and <laughs> we started in her driveway. Yes, started in her five really? o'clock in the morning in the from driveway. Fort Worth to Hazlitt. And Shout she, out to and Carrie and all them girls out there. Yeah, yes. thank you, Carrie, for supporting Steve. Yes, you see what I'm saying. I know how that is. Mm-hmm. But I was going to say something mm-hmm. on that note. They were saying being able to show your uh, client. Mm-hmm. I so I haven't done it in a while, but everybody do. Mm-hmm. I pick a day in the gym and beat up everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it keep it keep me Even sharp going, keep yeah. me sharp. Mm-hmm. But it, it gives them okay, he does know what he's saying. Yeah, and it gives them a sense of I hit a heavyweight gym. Yeah. No, but I, I didn't hit, hit coach. Yeah, yeah, I hit coach. <laughs> yeah. That's that, that's yeah. the thing about how powerful that is Bro, you see. These jokers, this is probably three years ago now. Coach, remember major nose bleed? <laughs> uh, really? It was, it was just a little trivial. Yeah, 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 yeah. I made your nose bleed. <laughs> and that's what it means. Yeah. yeah. So it's, I, that just brought back that yeah. memory. Just that, thinking about that's that. That's what I'm talking about right there. Yeah. Grace Owens? I mean, I don't know. 
don't know. He had a lot of cool stuff to say. I thought it was really cool. Um, what was, I guess, the most significant fight? Because I know what the most significant basketball game for me was. You never really forget that one. For sure. Um, I won four belts. The Texas title belt, the NBA belt, the WBO Latin America belt. I remember, I know about that. Mm -hmm. And the USBA belt. Mm -hmm. The most significant is the USBA. Why is that? Muhammad Ali held that belt. Mm -hmm. All the greats have held that belt. Really? I can say I've held that belt. Right on. I didn't become world champion. But I hear that. Bill. Yeah, that bill right there. <laughs> yeah, I, that, you see what I'm saying? saying? Yeah, so I think that would be yeah. the most significant right there. Yeah. What's your most significant? Um, I was in the ninth grade. I was, we were losing by three. We had two minutes left. We were down by twelve, and we came back. We went to overtime, but the last shot was. We were down by three, hmm. and we had like six seconds left. Um. This girl had been going for fakes all day, so I was like, all right, one more Kobe pump fake. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Kobe, because it's Mamba Day. Yeah. And um, I had to make three free throws, and I just remember Coach Roger, my basketball coach in high school, um, she was sitting on the bench watching me. I was a ninth grader. She was a varsity coach. And I had to make three free throws to get us into <laughs> overtime. Oh, my God. Pressure. This is the yeah. most. Pressure. But did you make them though? I need all three. Yeah, just like I need you at horse. Whatever, man. <laughs> don't don't be like, you know, man, just like, make that's, this stuff up. You ain't got no footage, so man. If I didn't have footage. I got, I got so, proof. Man, I need footage. Let's go. I need footage. For me, uh, it was my sophomore year against Air Force at, at TCU. But the reason it's the most significant because the game before that was against OU. And I my I went up. I it was a really I had a really decent game. They threw the ball at me eight times, had one completion. But that's the completion that uh, put in my head. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? To to to, to win, right? Dang. But the Air Force game was the game after Air Force was number five in the nation. I uh, and they came in to Amy G, and they threw the ball at me six times for no catches, and I made the last play of the game mm -hmm. on the fourth down and knocked the ball down. The reason it was so significant, it reminded me that I could actually play the game. Indeed. Because that OU game, boy, I didn't want to talk to nobody. And Coach Thurman was reminding me I could play, and Fran, he was like, man, you, you going to let them homeboys but it reminded me that, yo, I belong, I, I do belong, I, do belong I can belong, yeah. you know, that's yeah. why, and it changed the course of my entire sophomore, junior, senior year. That confidence. <laughs> yeah, man, that's, that's man. what it did yeah. for me, because yeah. OU killed me. Yeah, <laughs> that winning that so, USBA belt was that, mm -hmm. I am at this level. Wasn't even about the belt, it mm -hmm. was, I belong. I belong. I belong. Grades in ninth grade, you see the, the bar, I belong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, man, I belong. Yeah. This is where I belong. Yeah. Same thing fitness is doing for me one week. That's where I belong. Mm -hmm. I don't belong nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> Eric no, said that's, that's he the remembers truth. when I beat you at horse. Who? Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyway, now, <laughs> I knew he would have something to say. <laughs> but for you, it was that confidence. So mm -hmm. what would you like to tell the, the new business owners, uh, the, anybody who's looking? First of all, uh, Kenny, are we good so I can make sure everybody knows where Dream Performance is? How okay. can they reach you, man? Where can they find you on on the line? Okay. You know, where can they find you on Facebook, Instagram? I've been there. That place is fantastic. Appreciate sure. uh, And I've seen it from the idea. Indeed. And it be birthed into, it be manifested into Indeed. something tangible that you can actually, as an address. Go see. What's that address? Um, so Dream Performance is 6707. Meadowbrook Drive, Fort Worth, 76112. Um, you can catch us on Facebook and Instagram at Dream Performance. Um, and my personal Facebook is Kendrick Relaford. Mm -hmm. And then um, IG is K Relaford Fitness. Oh, well, K Relaford underscore, underscore Fitness. Underscore Fitness. Mm -hmm. Right on. Rick, so where can they find you? And tell them about Speed School that's coming up in May. Okay. Well, let me say one more question. Natasha, think about it. Natasha said, What's your theory in correction and making it stick? Um, mine is uh, the language. If, if I can tie my concept to their language of understanding, it'll stick. 
Like my my great grandmother taught me a closed mouth never gets fed, and she wasn't talking about food. Mm -hmm. it's, it it sticks with me. Um, okay, and then me, you can follow me at Gracie Dagnino um, on Facebook or G R A Y C E E Dagnino on Instagram. And then, and then PE's performance experience both on Twitter, Instagram, and then performance experience on Facebook. Right on, right on. And we have a digital program coming out so that now that we can't. Hang out with people as much as we used for to. For sure, we, we have to give this yeah. knowledge away. We have to package school. it and give it away. Yeah. With, you know what I'm saying? Videos, yeah. words, so that they can understand how to evolve. What What would you like to say to an up and coming boxer or that kid that got beat up by Don back in the day? Or you know what I'm saying? If you, what would you say to that former boxer who wants to be an entrepreneur? Mm -hmm. And don't tell them. Be strong, have faith, have confidence, because they got that. They That's got why that. they want to get into it. Indeed. What can they take that'll keep certain, keep them out of certain sand pits? Be a student of the game. Which game? Rather than boxing or business. Commerce. Commerce, man. Be a student. Yeah. Mm. Ask your questions. My uncle always told me look at everything like a private investigator. Who did this? Why they did it? When they do it? Why? Where? Who was there? Mm. <laughs> hey man, this, yeah, this take that is absolutely Indeed. pleasure for me. Yeah. Can we have you back? Indeed, yeah. All right, we're gonna have you back real, real soon. I know it's more stuff we need to cover. Hey, There's a whole bunch of stuff we need to cover, <laughs> so we're gonna have a man relevant yeah. back. Go see Dream Performance mm -hmm. if you're looking to learn how to defend yourself, uh, looking to be a fitness. fighter, or check out where you fit, or fitness, or just yeah. learning how to understand conditioning and, and, and boxing style. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's tremendous. We'll see you guys. Really, really sick. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, great. You're training, I think, two of my students this year. Uh, I am Uh-huh. Big I.